You want to do after show? Sure. Okay. Is it Creighton in Austin? Uh, hi, yeah. How's it going? Good. How, Good. Are you? How are you? I'm good. I've met you both in person. I've gone to the ACA meetings a couple of times. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, re I remember you. How you doing? I'm good. Good. I, we just got done with uh, our first weekend. I'm doing uh, Jesus in uh, Jesus Christ Superstar up in Georgetown. Cool. Um, yeah, I kind of just plugging that, but I, you know, I wanted to, you know, talk about the issues of, of being an atheist playing, you know, Jesus, especially <laughs> in Georgetown, <laughs> where it's, you know, slightly more conservative. Yeah. Enough. Yeah. And you might you might encounter people who, you know, if you were to say that, that might you know, re react with a look of consternation, you know. I'm just wondering what your thoughts are about something like that. Well, uh, well that that's kind of an interesting thing. Uh. Yeah, I think maybe um, it would be good for you to call in because I'd kind of like to, for you know, for our bigger audience to hear what some of your experiences have been. Uh, well, you know, it, I think it, it's a diverse group who's in the show. Um, yeah. And, um, theater people. I'm, I'm also involved in community theater, and, and my experience has been theater people are are, are pretty uh, liberal and non-religious as well. At least the ones I've met, even up in Williamson County. Yeah, so. I think that 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 that's far, that probably accurately describes a lot of the cast. It, ironically enough, Caiaphas and Pilate are both being played by pastors. Oh, interesting. Uh. Well, I, actually, I think Pilate is the musical director of a church, but it, that's yeah. Um, okay, well, that is very interesting. Hopefully, I'll get a chance to, to. When does the show open? Uh, it was. We actually just got done with our matinee show for the opening weekend earlier today. Okay. Oh, cool. cool. So it, it's running until February fifteenth. Okay. All right. So Great. if you're in Austin or in the Georgetown area, you can go see an atheist play Jesus. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> Thank you guys so All much. Right. Cool. Thanks, Thanks Creighton. Bye. Okay. So let's go to Dan and Buffalo. Hi. How, how are you? Thanks for taking my call. Hi, Dan. Yeah, you're on the after show, so... Yeah, I know. I'm going to get quick. Um, it's kind of a... Uh, what makes it... Or I've heard you guys talk about govern, the government sanctionizing religions. Not literally, or they're not supposed to, but they kind of have to. Um, well, not in the I'm U.S. I was wondering... What's that? I'm sorry. Not in the U.S. Well, as far as tax exemptions and stuff like that, okay, right? Yeah. Yeah, they have, have to. to be, like, an established church or... Yeah. Okay. So, let's just, let's just say, and I know it's just, uh, I'm not joking at all. Let's just say two angels came down to me, like they did Joseph Smith, I don't know if one angel did or whatever, but and said, the right way to live is to smoke marijuana. Everyone's got it wrong. Couldn't they not infringe on my religious beliefs? That's actually happened. There, there's, yeah. there's been churches in the U.S. Who have, who have said that that's part of their religious ritual, and, and they've tried to do the, exactly that. Yeah. How's that worked out for them? Not well. The court has found that basically a generally applicable law uh, isn't an infringement of your religion. I think that's a little bit of a cop-out because during Prohibition, they still let the Catholics use wine. So, and so I was going to say, I'm sorry, I was going to say I grew up as a Catholic and saw plenty of, I did myself, 14, 15, 16 year olds drinking wine. And uh, no one is IDing you there or worrying about the law. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and actually some Native American uh, religions have, um, they use peyote in their, their rituals. And for a while that was illegal, and I guess now they have an exemption that if uh, I think if they're on the reservation or whatever, they're allowed yeah, to do whatever they, they want their, to do. So they have their yeah. own land, huh? Yeah. So basically, so, it wouldn't it's the laws go first, the established laws come first. Yeah, that's uh, kind of how the courts have ruled in the, the past. Rules. Yeah. yeah. It seems kind of weird. I don't know, just because Joseph Smith can say, uh, you know, I can have multiple wives and. Another person, they don't believe you if you're telling them something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, and they came after right. they well, came after them as well. Yeah. Yeah. They uh they didn't allow that. So. Right. Anyway. But I see that show like sister wives, don't they? Isn't they okay? Well, um, the deal on that with sister wives is that um, the guy is legally married to only one of them, and then uh -huh. you know whatever happens in the church that doesn't actually establish any legal rights until you go get the piece of paper from the county clerk. Yeah. So he's, he's not legally married to right. more than one? Right. Right. 
Sister the sister oh, wives okay. are just the sister wives are the spiritually married but not legally yeah. married. Huh. I know that's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, thank you for uh, answering my questions. I know you guys got to go. All right. Okay. But, uh, I, I do appreciate you taking the call. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Yeah. All right. We'll take one more. We'll do Mario in Tucson. Hey, Mario. How are you? Hi. Um, I'm good. You'll be the you'll be the last uh, call. To, I'm sorry. You'll be the last call. Okay. Cool. So I wanted to uh, ask about you. You may have already addressed this. I kind of tuned in late, but I wanted to ask if you guys had any feelings on a tweet by David Silverman. Um, on January 7th, he said, if you call yourself a Muslim, you legitimize all parts of Islam, including the terrorists. And this tweet got a lot of flack, people calling him atheist scum. Um, and like, I might have been a little sort of irked by it at first, but I generally agree with it. I mean, it can be offensive, but when you think about it, I find truth in it. I just want to know what you guys thought. Well, I, I didn't see the tweet, so I, I can't, you know, say for sure, you know, what he said, what, what the context was. Um, Dave's a friend of mine, and I know he, he says and tweets provocative things. Mm -hmm. In this case, I think the point he's trying to make is that um, kind of what we were talking about on the show is that the moderates in any religion give political cover to the extremists. Yeah, right. And so, I would definitely like to see the more moderate, more peaceful Muslims stand up and say, "This, you know, you're giving our religion a bad name. Stop doing this and, and uh, yeah. stop legitimizing it with their silence. Yeah, or instead of screaming about Islamophobia every time something gets criticized in their religion, you know, yeah. to cool. actually stand up and address it. Ultimately, I, I think I have a big problem with, um, like, I think I'd have a bigger problem with moderates standing up and saying not all Muslims. Yeah. I think I'd rather see moderates sort of abandoning their Muslim religion because they practice from a book with tenets based in violence. I mean, why call yourself a Muslim? Why adopt, adopt any of the uh, scripture or, you know, doctrine at all when extremists can interpret the exact same words for violence? Yeah, and you could say the same about Christians too. Why, why continue to, for example, if you're gay and Christian, why continue to follow this religion that, that, that is against you? Uh, people tr try to redefine their religion and still hang on to it because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a very personal thing that they grew up with and they, there's a lot of emotional attachment to it. And I, I think probably uh, the same is true with Muslims. Yeah. All right, well, thank you. All right, sure. 